Today I would like to explain a concept that is very common in medical textbooks and it's called total iron binding capacity or um, also called TIBC, total iron binding capacity. And this is often confusing because People sometimes say that this is the same as transferrin and in some way it is but not 100% and I hope that by the end of this video you will understand this very clearly. So as explained in some of my other videos transferrin carries iron molecules around the body. So let's say this is iron Fe and let's say this would be one transferrin molecule um, and each transferrin molecule has two seats or two spots where iron can be carried. So each one of these seats, let's just draw the iron there, can take one iron molecule or iron iron and will carry this around the body to wherever this is needed. So the um, transferrin will take it, for instance, uh, to the bone marrow and deliver the iron there to help with the production of blood but it can obviously take iron to wherever it is needed. Now what does total iron binding capacity mean? So let us take a um, volume of blood. Okay, I'm just going to, let's say this is now a, uh, a cup filled with blood. Okay, so that's filled with blood. And let's say we have 100 moles or 1 deciliter of blood here. Now inside this volume of blood that we've drawn from the patient, there will be many of these transferrin molecules. Now obviously it will be millions, but we're just going to, to do this schematically so that it is much easier to understand. All right, so as you can see, um, each transferrin molecule has got two seats, never more or less than that, so that is a fixed number. So what we can say about this is that the total iron binding capacity would be the maximum amount of iron that can bind to the transferrin molecules in this volume of blood. So as you can see here, because the number of seeds per molecule is fixed, the number of molecules of transferrin will determine the total iron binding capacity. In other words, if you have less transferrin, this will go down, and if you have more, that will go up. Now, this is then usually expressed as a value in micrograms, micrograms per deciliter, or can be micro moles per deciliter. All right, so in a normal total iron binding capacity would be somewhere between 250 to 450 micrograms per deciliter and depending on the lab where you work it could also be micromole per deciliter and it's somewhere between 4.4 and 8.0 so that's 8 micromoles per deciliter so this is the maximum amount of iron that can be bound per deciliter in a normal person now what is serum iron then Serum iron is simply the total amount of iron that is actually bound. So let's say th those molecules of iron is bound and these as well. All right. You can see that's four out of a total of 12 years. So that's about one third of the total transferrin molecules are, b are bound with iron. That is called the serum iron is serum iron or we can just say SI and that usually is then uh, somewhere between 50 to 150 micrograms per deciliter or about plus minus let's say 1.8 micromoles per deciliter all right so the serum iron reflects the um, total iron that is actually bound to transferrin and the total iron binding capacity is the, let's say, the potential for iron binding. So the total amount of iron that can be bound if all the seats were taken up on all the transferrin molecules of iron. And you can see here, 
um, as I've drawn in this picture as well, that about one third of the seats are taken under normal circumstances. And we can translate that into another format, and that is we can say the serum iron divided by the total iron binding capacity will tell us what number of seats are taken. And if we turn this into a percentage, so we have to multiply this with 100, then you get to a percentage value, and this is the transferrin saturation. I've made a whole video on the transferrin saturation and the interpretation thereof, which you can go and have a look at. And normally, um, we said that one third of the seats are taken, so that means that under normal circumstances, the transferrin saturation is plus minus 30%. There's another uh, term that is sometimes used, and it is called the unsaturated iron binding capacity, or so-called U. IBC and that reflects all the molecules that are not bound to iron. It's also some people also call it call it latent iron binding capacity. So these are the seats that are available and open and now it's easy. Hey, if we say that this part was the serum iron, in other words all the molecules bound to transferrin and this is the unbound fraction, then we can also say we could translate this as total iron binding capacity equals the serum iron plus the un unsaturated iron binding capacity. So I hope uh, that you now have a much better understanding of what total iron binding capacity means and how it relates to serum iron and serum transferrin saturation. I would like to strongly recommend that you watch the video on transferrin saturation and its interpretation to also see what this means clinically and in what diseases the total iron binding capacity and transferrin saturation is affected.